Hello everyone, welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. We're here at Present Tense Launch Night in New York City to check out some of the most innovative Jewish projects in the market today. Let's take a closer look. Hi, my name is Hadas Ben Yaakov and I started an organization called HelpThisJew.com. Um, there are 350,000 Jews in the greater New York area that have been classified as poor or near poor. These are our people, these are our brothers and sisters, and we need to help them. HelpThisJew.com is a social networking charity that serves as an anonymous link between those who need assistance and those who can give it. And with your help, we can be successful in helping those who need it. My name is Irene Mazel, and my project is the Digital Judea Project and it addresses the fact that kids these days spend up to 20 hours a week on Facebook and they're not necessarily posting about Talmud or Torah. So the Abraham Joshua Heschel School created the Digital Judea Project to address that fact. It is an online Facebook-like simulation of ancient Judea. Students blog as ancient Jews and they use a 3D modeling program to build renderings of ancient synagogues online. Yiddish is not dead and you really have done something really interesting in bringing Yiddish to the forefront. Tell us about your initiative. So I run the Yiddish farm. Uh, this is a working organic farm and we run Yiddish immersion programming there. We have students there right now and they spend part of their day working in the farm and only speaking Yiddish and part of their day learning Yiddish with me. Why do you decide to create this project? Uh, the reason I created it was because people who study Yiddish don't have an opportunity to experience full immersion among native speakers. Uh, people with other languages can study abroad and get that experience and become fluent and unfortunately a lot of Yiddish students don't become fluent. So the, the purpose of Yiddish Farm is actually to help Yiddish students reach that level of full fluency. Where is Yiddish Farm located? Uh, we're in Goshen, New York, about an hour and a half from the city. Uh, and we run programs for people who already speak Yiddish as well as for people who don't speak Yiddish, ranging from one day to three months. And, you know, whenever you start a new project, you don't know kind of like where it's going to go. Did anything surprise you as you're developing this project? Um, yeah, I mean, one thing that surprised me, one thing that just didn't occur to me was how close we are to Kiryas Joel, uh, which is one of the largest Yiddish-speaking cities in the world. Uh, so we've actually developed a close relationship with a lot of institutions there. Uh, the, we get, did a composting workshop in one of the yeshivas and they bring us their compost. We sell uh, produce to all of the grocery stores in Kiryas Joel. And a lot of people come from that neighborhood and it's sort of the symbiotic thing. They get to learn about the farm. They're native Yiddish speakers so they get, you know, the uh, Yiddish students get exposed to a real, uh, you know, a, a fully natural Yiddish. And, you know, whenever you are, uh, you're brought up with the Yiddish. And I guess that was the motivation to continue that legacy. Um, what are you seeing in the Jewish world um, in terms of trying to um, keep, on, keep the tradition of Yiddish? Uh, I think that, I mean, there's been a lot of articles about a Yiddish revival going on throughout the world. There's over 50 universities teaching Yiddish now. There's Yiddish summer programs all over the world. Klezmer music has become popularized across continents. You have. Uh, over 10,000 Yiddish books have been digitized and are available for free on the internet. So I think that um, the, in, the interest and demand is there. What's missing is the community and uh, opportunities to actually use the language. So tell us how you actually started in like, building this community. Um, we started with a three-week pilot program. Uh, this was last year. We went to an existing farm and it was only for people who already spoke Yiddish. Uh, we drew from three populations. Um, people who come from Hasidic backgrounds, people like myself from Yiddish backgrounds, and uh, advanced Yiddish students. We had them living together for three weeks, spending part of their time in Yiddish cultural activities and part of their time farming. And we, uh, lear you know, we learned a lot of lessons in those three weeks. And then this year we piloted a beginner's program, as well as uh, a much length uh, a lengthened advanced program. And we're going to be also piloting some smaller programs for people to come for just a week. I am a video blogger. And one of the things that I've learned is that you can reach so many more people if you have a vision using video. And your project is really interesting in bringing Jewish values to the forefront, utilizing technology, especially video. Why did you create it? 
So we're all aware that too many young Jewish professionals are disconnected from their Jewish identity. They find no meaning, no relevance, no connection to their Jewish values. So the answer, we think, is inspiration. We provide that inspiration. Bestkindoflife.com shows the timelessness, the meaningfulness, and, and the value of Jewish values through short, inspirational YouTube videos. We have 21,000 people view our videos so far, 6,000 Twitter followers, 1,800 Facebook friends. So we're growing like wild, which means that there's a need for this kind of message and bestkindoflife.com make sure that that message is being spread to Jews out there. And whenever you start a project, sometimes you, you, you hit a bump or you're like, you're looking, you know, like three or five years. Um, did anything surprise you as you were developing your project? You know, what, what was impressive is, is the type of feedback that we got back. We never thought we'd reach people on such an emotional level. And people are writing in saying, you know, this really made a difference. And you think about it, it's a three to five minute YouTube video. How much of a difference can it make? But you know what, in that short amount of time, for somebody that day, it made all the difference to kind of give them a, a, a bit of inspiration and connect that to their Jewish heritage. And with, with videos, obviously it's timeless. Once, you, once it's on YouTube, it's there forever. Um, how do you go about like sourcing your video? Sure, right now we have an in-house production team, but our next step is to open it up to a global competition. So the best videographers, the best photographers could enter a competition, win cash prizes, win an introduction to a Hollywood personality, and we're hoping to receive dozens of videos, and out of those, take two, three that have an opportunity to have, you know, may potentially go viral and reach literally hundreds of thousands of people. Sometimes it's hard to accessorize with Judaism, but your project is very unique. Tell us a little about it. Well, Midrash Manicare is, is Torah at your fingertips, literally. We study Torah texts about the portion of the week, about the holiday, and then paint it on our nails. I paint with my students so they, they can feel empowered to be able to speak about their learning and have it as part of as a part of them during the week. Um, and they feel empowered to speak about it through their learning. And how did you come up with that? Um, I've been doing this myself for the past 15 years. I, I love painting my nails, um, and I've been doing nail art related to Jewish themes. Um, but only last year did I finally launch a website at the request of many people to be able to see my nails each week. Friends from afar said, why don't you just post them already? Um, and it spread virally this past July. We've been featured in the New York Times in the Jewish Week. Um, and this is it's a trend in that it's Torah learning with nail art, and nail art is the fastest growing sector of the cosmetics industry right now. And what are you hoping for your organization to grow like in the next two, three years? In the next two, three years, I hope that Midrash Manicures can expand its reach to thousands of more students of all ages. Um, we're working right now to develop a curriculum for schools so that they can have Midrash Manicure workshops across the country. And um, we just launched our line of Jewish nail decals for Shavuot. Um, they shipped as far as Australia. And we're going to be having nail decals for Rosh Hashanah, for Hanukkah, and you can have the 10 legs on your fingernails for Passover. It's great. So it's very exciting. Did anything surprise you as you were developing your project? Um, I'm surprised at how much that this has impacted individuals across the world. I mean, people that did not feel otherwise connected to Torah have said, Rabbi Buechler, you've inspired me. Um, I may not paint my nails myself, but I still want to follow your website and learn about Torah in this new and meaningful way. That's what they've said. And where can people learn more about your project? They can learn more at midrashmanicures.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook at Midrash Manicures or on Twitter as well. It's launch night, and there's some really exciting projects that are really going to transform the Jewish community. Um, what excites you about launch night? Uh, I think it's the chance for uh, you know presentants to kind of display you know the good work that we were doing in secret. Like I've been working with these 13 fellows over the past five months, and not me alone, the great crew of coaches, mentors, steering committee members, uh, great speakers and guests and subject matter experts, and that's mostly been kind of like, you know, behind closed doors, and today is a great, like, kind of public unveiling, where it's not just the president's community, but the wider community uh, can see, you know, how far the fellows have, uh, have, have come, and, you know, where they could be in the future. So walk us through how they got here. Uh, so, I mean, we, we began probably, I think, back in September. We opened our application process. Uh, we had a record number of applications from across the New York area. Uh, and then our steering committee reviews the applications, goes through them, goes go through, reviews the ideas, uh, and then we invite 
Uh, you know, 24, you probably like double the cohort in for speed interviews. They're interviewed by members of the steering committee, by our mentors and coaches. Get to know the fellows a little better. Uh, and then we invite, uh, you know, 12, in this case 13, uh, to, join the, to join the cohort. And starting in February, once a month we met, we had seminars, we had workshops, kind of like a crash course in venture development. They were meeting with their coaches once a month, their mentors once a month. Uh, we had great guest speakers. We were learning from successful uh, entrepreneurs about their journey. We had uh, you know, Amidah, the founder of uh, Idealist, come speak to us. We went to visit Gary Rosenblatt uh, at the Jewish Week to learn about press relations. Had a, you know, a great crew of volunteers throughout the community helping out. And you know, one of the great things about the, like, like the launch is that finally like, these ideas are like coming to life. You know, like yeah. as you said, like these are things that have been like been worked on for the past couple of months, but now is like the time to like shine. Yes. What are you hoping um, that these like innovative products? You think what's the next step for them? Uh, what's the next step for? So I think you know the pipeline from you know idea to successful impactful organization is a long one so you know i don't pretend the present tense is like the end of the story i think present tense is a great first step we can take someone from you know idea to hopefully like proof of concept uh and then they'll you know probably have a year or two of trying to prove themselves in the community trying to get market buy-in building a community building a board uh hopefully you know signing on customers clients donors you know building a community around their idea and then, you know, I think an ideal situation would be, you know, a year later they are getting investment, they're getting funding from, you know, uh, foundations in the Jewish world, or perhaps they get, uh, you know, invited to join like an incubation program like Bikurim or uh, Joshua Venture or something like that. So, you know, we're, I think, the beginning of the pipeline and, you know, there are other, uh, you know, other destinations and other helpers along the way. And we hope that, you know, we are taking these entrepreneurs and putting them in good shape to, you know, grow along that pipeline. Hi. I'm Solomon Siegel, and my venture is the Jewish Design Collective. A, Jewish, a vibrant Jewish building is on the verge of collapse in Manhattan. In fact, many Jewish community buildings across the country are uh, dealing with a lot of challenging, challenging issues, both design-wise and structural issues. Jewish community, the Jewish Design Collective is here to, to help with that problem. Back in high school, I always wanted to, to learn Hebrew my way. And for some reason, they just wanted to do dig do and not to find the way to connect to the way I learned. Right. And your project is very interesting and in connecting students the way that they learn. Yes. Tell us about it. So I had the same experience as you. I went through Jewish Day School for 12 years and I graduated um, the highest Hebrew class. I passed out of the language requirement um, for college. And when I picked up Harry Potter, I was disappointed that it was so startling. I closed it three, four, six, seven times. Um, and I was interested in Harry Potter, so there was my motivation. And I, um, I picked it up again and I figured out what I knew and what I needed to know and how to get, um, how to get what I needed. Uh, through looking up vocabulary words, asking questions, using context clues, all the strategies that you use in English, I use, use them in Hebrew. And, it, and it's so important because everyone learns differently. Right. And I know that especially you know, children with disabilities, who right. where it's just, like Dikduk is not, is not a solution to learning Hebrew, right. but you know, being able to touch and feel and do, it's a, it's a unique way. Um, where do you see your project going in the next two years? So right now we are planning for a Hebrew language camp next summer, a one week of Hebrew day camp um, immersion uh, for sports next summer in 2013. We're also um, setting up our first Merkaz Sicha, our first conversation center at the Congregation Road of Shalom Religious School with the seventh grade. Um, and that will be uh, three modules operating throughout the year with the seventh graders learning Hebrew in an activity based setting. Did anything surprise you as you were developing your project? Um, constantly. I had this idea starting um, years ago when I was teaching myself Hebrew and also as I was teaching my students um, and present tense has given me the tools to create to get the word out about what I know I'm capable of doing and what I know my students are capable of doing. Um, so it's been a surprising trip. I've met amazing people throughout. Everybody's been so helpful and warm. And where can we learn more about your project? Um, the website, strategichebrew.com, 
Um, we're also setting up Hebrew language um, short five session classes uh, for all ages operating throughout the year and any topic you're interested in. So email me and check out the website and sign up for a class. As you can see, Present Tense Launch Night in New York City provide the opportunity for the community to learn more about innovative projects that are happening in the Jewish community. This is Aaron Herman. Thank you for watching. Thank you.